Welcome to Hash Knife Hangouts. I'm Kalen Carpenter. With me is my partner, co-host, and father, Brandon. And before we get started, like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Like, comment, share on Facebook. Find us on InstaG at hashknife.ranch.mt, all lowercase. And with that, we'll start with the uh, imaginary notes, because <laughs> I just winged all of that. Um, we last week, believe it or not, Today, I just released a thinking time thing where I went on a monologue. And that and if you look at that, it's describing the issues we had with this, which you probably can't see. There it is. Oh, there, there we go. Those were the notes from last week. Those are the <laughs> times. Those are what we went over. Everything. So I got them for, I got them for uh, comments and stuff like that for kind of like keeping us on track. We'll probably keep this around 50 minutes because we're actually going to go back to back and try a second episode before... I go to sleep and head to work early in the morning, but uh, I'll just, before we get started, like what happened was, uh, well, but, but, what happened was I recorded this with dad. Everything was great. We had a good conversation is a little, actually is a little over an hour long, but my microphone didn't work. Why? Because this little cord right here, you can probably see it's it. Sensitive. If yeah. It's a little sensitive. It popped out. And oh, so no. because it popped out, that's why we had the echoey, chambery like sound, and it didn't sound good. So what you're hearing now is good. What we heard before was just absolutely it was trash. So and everything I said was brilliant. It was. It was absolutely brilliant. How am I gonna do this again? Anyway, I know how. We're we're redoing. Yeah, yeah. Alcohol with so. a raspberry. Yeah. Hefeweizen. <sighs> what? Which one is that? It actually, it's uh, two Bassett Brewing in. Mm. White Sulphur Springs, Montana. One of my favorite breweries ever. Yeah, it's a good brewery. Um, yeah, yeah, seriously, though. Uh, Two Bassett is great. It's White Sulphur Springs. If you ever get a chance to go north of Livingston or west of the ranch, actually, by about yeah, two hours. South of Great Falls. Whew, it's it's a great place. And there's Helena, beautiful mountains. East of northern, northern end of the Shields Valley. It, That's it's, actually where I was born. It was where Dad's born, yeah. Yeah, um, White Sulphur Springs. Born on the north side, north end of the crazy mountains. We'll have to tell your story. Yeah, I'll tell you something. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have to tell you. We're gonna have to tell your story someday. But um, oh yeah, someday we'll do and, that. Anyway, had the notes, had the timestamps, everything. I went to record. I was like, okay, I set it up, produced it, had it all set, and I told Dad, I was like, so here's the problem. And he literally texted back and said, we're in this for quality. We want to make sure we are producing good stuff. Um, so we both agreed we're gonna scrap it. So this morning, I completely. I, I deleted it. It kind of broke my heart, but I deleted it. All that work, it was gone. Um, so we're restarting today. So May 30th is now going to be the 6th of June. So first of all, before that, today, the 6th of June, 2021, um, I would like to raise the remaining of my glass to those who stormed the beaches by the Allied yep. Front, the Canadians, the British, the, the remnants of the French, and of course, the United States Americans uh 77 years ago where boys became men and they stormed the beaches of gold utah U uh omaha juno um i, I know there's sword and i think there's one more missing yeah. um they're, they they stormed all those beaches and they they eventually started the foothold that liberated europe so gentlemen those of you who are still remaining alive and those who have departed to the next life skull skull ah um but seriously, uh, truly, you, you had 19, some some men lied. They were 16, 15 years old. Yeah. And they stormed those beaches, and they took over France and eventually Europe, and they, they got rid of, frankly, the Holocaust. Uh, Six million people were dead. They were killed systematically by the, the ideas of uh, Nazi Germany underneath of Himmler and uh, Adolf Hitler, and we are where we are today, and we are no longer speaking – we we didn't come close to speaking German nor Japanese, thankfully. So with that, we will get started with feed costs and prices. So we're five minutes into this puppy. Uh, I know we talked about high costs and high feed costs um, and, and prices and stuff like that. Um, originally, it was starting with there was uh, a cyber attack with um, the oil industry, which resulted in gas prices and stuff rising in the south. And then recently... Um, there's also well, another the, cyber you, attack that with I got to correct you there. There, there were there were shortages in the South because a pipeline shut down. The prices have been increasing, yeah, since mid January. 
okay. steadily because they shut down the XL Keystone pipeline. So prices have been jumping enormously since then. Then they shut, then the cyber attack shut down that other pipeline going to the East Coast. That caused shortages, which then caused increases also. So that's, there's, you got two different issues there with, with feed or uh, uh, fuel cost increases. Okay. I'll, I'll take that. And so yeah. with dad's explanation, that, that's fuel. That was one of the things. And then the second was feed costs. So feed costs are increasing because they're a secondary effect of those fuel costs. So, um, you know, we, we there are, we did our opening notes and stuff, but this is, this is where we're getting into our conversation. It was originally, you know, these, these, uh, cyber attacks are creating shortages. People are, you know, kind of fighting each other and putting freaking gas in, in, in literally Tupperware bins. It was ridiculous. Plastic and bags. There's some, there's some, <laughs> that's a funny one right there. there. Yeah. 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 Let them have them. Do it. Do it. But, but those things, those have very real effects on people like us. So, right. Um, I, I mean, with that, I, I know I very, just kind of hit the wave tops because of, because I took a little longer than usual with the, with the intro, but what are, what were kind of some of your initial takes with that dad? Well, here's, here's the problem. I mean, uh, we don't raise our own hay, first of all. So we got to do a little right. background here is why, why we do what we do or where we're at with, uh, our business plan for the ranch. And that is, uh, we're dry land. We don't have any irrigated ground. So if it's a good year with weather, which is we're always dependent on weather on everything we do. I mean, we're constantly watching weather. That's and, and, and let, let's keep that in mind for everybody. That's an agricultural thing. That's not an us thing. That is a right. rancher farmer thing. Like you're you're growing crops, you're watching that weather because you gotta you gotta time planting, you gotta time tilling, you gotta time all this stuff. Then and for us the hell it rains. Yeah. Well, and then it's for the right us, some, some of the things believe it or not, some of the things we're actually, we're like, Oh, it's gotta be dry before we do this. So we wait right. and we wait and we wait. And then we see it's going to be a dry spell. We hit when we go for it, or it's going to be wet. And we're like, okay, let's, you know, we, calving, for example, it's going to be wet. Gotta watch those calves. Gotta make sure they're not going to go hypothermic or anything like right. that. Snow. But, yeah, yeah. Sudden storms. But anyway, uh, any, anybody who's watching that's related in agriculture in any way, we share a common experience and that is if you had a tv on in a house or radio is on in a, in a car or radio on whatever in a in the house and all of a sudden the news comes on and they start talking about weather everybody i mean you literally stop to listen yep for a forecast to see what's yep. going on and it's a lot easier now with i mean we got this stuff at our fingertips uh literally with a with a cell Smartphone. phone yeah yeah but uh so you can really look it up anytime you want but I mean, that's just something you grow up with. I'm sure you guys did the same thing. I mean, you can have a conversation. All of a sudden, everybody just stops talking because all of a sudden, forecast is on. So we're, you know, coordinating. It's funny, too, because in the military, it's gone from me seeing what the weather's like for, you know, taking care of animals and stuff to, well, I really hope it's not a poor weather (laughs) conditions when I'm out training. (laughs) It's completely (laughs) selfish at this point. We're like, oh, what's the weather like? But yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's true, but. So we have, we have dry land. We don't irrigate. We've got no sprinklers. We've got no uh, live water through the place other than, you know, springs that are meant strictly to, to water animals. I mean, we just don't have any uh, large quantities of water for crops. So uh, on a good year, where we've got a lot of rain. Conditions are right. We can actually hay our ground and, and put up dry land hay and, uh, and used to in quantities that would sustain us. We have since uh, made the decision to not renew or or uh, put money into more equipment or newer equipment, uh, meaning Swather, which cuts the hay, Baylor, which bales the hay, Stacker, which stacks the hay. Um, so we don't and we don't have Stacker that is not anymore. me or Braden or another yeah, not anymore. Uh, it's it's an actual. It's an actual device. <laughs> well, and we're using big round bales now too, instead of the small square also true. cubes, yeah. except for some of the horse stuff. We still yeah. do that. You know, yeah. we, we put in, you know, 15, 20 ton of that a year, which is not a lot, but it's, it's, it's not insignificant either. It's, it's a couple of days of work. Big deal. Which now that you say that you say 15, 20 ton, that's not a big deal. What's 15, 20 ton. That's 30 to 40,000 pounds of hay. People right. are like, Oh my goodness. I'm like, yeah, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Not really. No, it's kind of small potatoes. So we, we have that aspect of it where 
Uh, we don't put it up, but now we purchase it. And so the, the ground that we would have hayed, it's more efficient, cost effective, and more predictable to be able to graze it. Yeah. Run a few more head of cows. And so then we choose to purchase our hay from from uh, guys that are they're making hay. They're building hay bales for us or anybody at large. And so we have some relationships with a number of different people to purchase hay from them. And uh, from year to year, every year, we some we've done for a, a good number of years. Um, this time of year is that time when, you know, I, I, you know, I just call them on the phone or I stop by their place and say, hey, you going to have any hay for sale? And they're like, yeah. I said, okay, you know, what are we looking at? This so is what I know I need. We, we talked about this last week and I, to keep us kind of on the same similar track, how early do you start reaching out? Cause you said you, you kind of stop by, but I know you do it tactically in a sense for timing for hay and, and making sure you've got the right in before other people jump on it. Like what, why well, do you, it, what's, what's the timing and why do you do it then? There's, it's, it's not just timing. It's building a relationship as well. Right. Yeah. So rapport. Uh, it's a rapport. The thing of it is though, um, people are depending on, on putting up hay and making a profit. I mean, that's the same as we are with our cattle. And a lot of them run cattle and do hay. Um, so some just do hay. Just depends on on what their operation is, how how most efficient and best bang for their buck and money making that they can make. So I don't begrudge them to make as much as they can off of their product. It's the same as us. Yeah. It's the same as us. Try, trying to make a little money. Not, not a lot, right. but a little bit. But, but what I want to be able to do is I want to be first in line. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want somebody to slip in and go, hey, uh, you know, I need a uh, hundred ton of hay and I haven't gotten there to them. So, you know, I'm, I'm starting to talk to them first of mid-May, you know, we're winding up calving and uh, the grass is starting to grow a little bit. And so I'm, I'm starting to reach out and say, hey, um, you know, for instance, like what we're doing like this year is I'm looking at 275, 280 ton of hay for to get us through the winter for all the cows and horses yeah and so i split that up between four or five are those all big rounds and they're all all, almost yeah all big rounds that's all big round stuff and then we got the small round or small squares for in addition 20 you said let's say 280 ton divided by 1200 that's how many bales we're looking at if anybody wants to look at the numbers so right you're in you're in you're in the neighborhood of 400 bales right 400 big bales sure probably you do better at um, yeah, well, more than that. that math than Any, I do. I'm about yeah, to throw anyway, it out there. But that's but that's significant. And and so every time every time a wheel turns on a piece of ground, whether it's the swather doing it, or it's cutting that hay down and and putting it into a windrow, um, so it can be baled, which is another another uh, machine with a wheel turning, or and then the stacker or you know tractors. Every time a wheel turns, it takes power to do that in the form of gas or diesel Mm -hmm. and when that price goes up on that it costs them per acre or per ton so much money to put that product in a package which is a bale so if a year ago gas was at its one of its lowest yeah for a while for a long time uh the price of fuel or the price of hay didn't come down significantly but because we also had guess what drought yeah. We had a lot of areas where they could not produce any hay. So it's supply and demand. When you've got no hay and you have got significant drought or sig- significant loss of production in other areas, price for that product goes up. Supply and demand. It, so, I mean, to, to kind of give people an, an idea too, that was one of the things that was nice in, in 14 for us was if you look at graphs, we've looked at it before. 14 was a high point for us cattle wise before things started kind of tanking. And there's other reasons for that, but yeah, it was a high, that another one. Yeah. yeah, it was a high point. But at the same time, if anybody remembers that same year, there was a lot of drought issues in Texas. Those, those, and it's, it's funny because we've, we've done a review on the Yellowstone series. If you look on Netflix, the ranch, one episode shows where, um, a certain area of Colorado where the, where the show is had a, a significant natural disaster, which resulted in them getting high prices and they were able to survive. That's what happened to us. Texas 
had an amazing loss with natural disaster, which helped the Northerners and the Midwesterners in cattle prices because their loss was our gain. In the well, same were, way of, of the other way around too, our drought can sometimes help others as well. Right. Well, and there were some, and during that same time, uh, South Dakota and Nebraska had some horrendous early spring Winters. storms. Yeah. That wasn't, it wasn't weather related on long term. It was single storms over a week that killed a lot of cattle. Like so there was a, had a, a loss of available uh, animals to go to feedstock. So yeah. that drove the price up. So, I mean, this is all weather related. And I mean, obviously outside of anybody's control. So anytime you, you have the supply and demand based on weather, and then you have fuel costs on top of that. Now the fuel cost isn't just to make it. We have to have that trucked in. We just don't go and pick that up. You know, when you're talking 400 bales or plus, I think I did last year, we had uh, eight truck loads brought in. I think it was eight. And they were hauling like 52 to 40, depending on who was hauling. I had a couple of different guys hauling it, 48 to 52 bales per truck. So now you're hauling, not now you're not paying for the hay. You've already bought the hay. Yeah. Now you're getting it to us at last year was $22 a ton. Try Try buying your food. And then suddenly it's just sitting at Walmart or sitting right. at, you know, what, wherever you buy your place, all these, you know, J Trader Joe's, but it's sitting at the cash register. Now you can't physically go there and pick up the food, even though, you know, realistically you, you physically can, but in this case, you can't, you, you're not, you're not jolly, the green giant. <laughs> you've, you've got to have somebody go pick that up for you and transport it to you. That's the, that's the other accrued cost to taking care of these animals and and if you want to look at it in those terms that's a really good way to put it um you've bought your your groceries and now you're going to spend another 25 percent of what you just spent on the groceries to get them delivered to your house 25 percent. that's a lot now 25%. people i know are they're used to uber eats and stuff like that right but 25 percent that's a lot of money you know right. every hundred dollars you're spending that let's say Burger King and you're going to have an Uber Eats all the way to you, you're going to, you're going to have a hundred or you're going to have another 25 bucks to bring that right. fast food to you. Like that's crazy. You and, know? and you know what? The trucker has got his vehicle, which is his truck trailers. Yeah. I mean, it's all and, him too. Like he's got to make a little bit of money off hey, of it too. And you know what? His, his, every time he turns a wheel on that, just as the guy who's putting the hay up, it depreciates in value his, his equipment. Yep, and it costs him to run it. He's got fuel. He's got oil. He's got maintenance. He's got insurance. He's got everything that it takes to run that. To God get forbid it to a us. flat tire. Now you're gonna take. Not only are you taking time, but you're taking an asset. Codes. You're gonna have to go. Yeah, hydraulic codes especially. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that's and the that's worst thing that can happen. I can think of is a hydraulic hose because the, well, the hydraulic fluid is expensive in itself. Plus the hose, plus the the time it's gonna take. It. So here's the thing: people don't understand. Yes, there's there's the there's the issue that's happening, the time it takes, but then a lot of people forget just how valuable that time does take. Right. <laughs> like well, that and, time and, is a lot of money. Well, and you think of it in this term in this term, uh when they're putting up hay, it isn't like they're not breaking down. No, they're breaking down all the time. All the time. You know, you got you gotta replace sickle sections if you've got a, a header on a uh swather that is the old style like a like knives that go back and forth yeah some of them are disc or, or rotary type now uh different different types but you know what this equipment breaks it 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 fails bearings go out uh like last year i, I said hydraulic hose uh, you know on, on some of the equipment but uh i had coordinated to meet him at the hay yard where we put this this uh, stuff up i'm sitting there waiting he gives me a call he says hey i blew an airline Oh, my truck won't work. I, Air, I can't like get the hydraulics. brakes done. Yeah. Well, it's, but it's, it's pneumatics, hydraulics. It does the same purpose, right? Yeah. And so he had to get another air hose, hook it up, get it in there. It takes a day for him to get that. So that day was shot. Mm -hmm. And so that screwed up my day. I mean, that's just the, that's just the nature of it. I mean, you got to roll with that. Yeah. So it costs money to do this and their costs increase. So now we're looking at an increase, not just to put the hay up this year. We're also looking at a, 
increase to get it to us. So, so and, and we don't know what some, it is because I, I can't get anybody to commit on what the prices are. Right. Well, and, and I think something to, to kind of throw out there too is the, the we, we, we've talked about time and time, something you taught me a long time ago because you worked in a mechanic shop at a young age and you kind of, hey, time is money, time is money, time is money. I learned that early. It's part of the reason why I am the way I am now in the military and it drives others crazy. But hey, it makes me a good officer. Um, the The thing is, when it comes to paying, there's a process. And I, I reason why I'm doing this because it was in our previous notes, so I'm going to do it again. <laughs> the, there's, a, there's a process. There's, you go Swather, Baylor, oftentimes Stacker. Okay, before they got that, though, you, if you've got an irrigated place, you're running a sprinkler or you're running water on yeah, that thing, and you're putting true. your physical labor into that, or you're running pumps. That's true. Electric pumps, you're running. You may and you may pump. have a gas pump that's pumping, uh, you know, to get that water to those fields. Yeah, I mean that that is true. I, let's just say the production itself, it's it's grown. Yeah. It's everything's hunky dory. We'll we'll say the production itself of the hay, not the grass, but the hay. You've got the swather, the baler, oftentimes, m- more than likely, the stacker, and then the transport, which we just talked about. That's four places where it can mess up. Why? Well, because swather like you said it's got discs it's got sickle sections it's got whatever those things break and like that for is example, a Rube goldberg type of machine oh yeah the the, <laughs> the sickle sections they go like this and they cut they literally cut the grass and so when those things break you gotta stop the operation i'm talking stop because if you don't stop that's how you lose limbs how do i know because i've seen people with lost limbs because they didn't do it right you literally shut it down you stop because that's the safest way to do it. Otherwise, you can lose your limb, and you're you lose your limb. You're lucky. You can lose you, your you life. lose your life. A lot of people yeah. have been killed doing this. So yeah. so you shut it down. You you pop it out. You fix it. Blah. I mean, that's just the sickle section itself. That's an easy fix. Talk about you know again hydraulics. Tire go out. Tires gone out on me. I had to get my uncle and my grandpa to help me fix the tire for that one. So that was a, that was an interesting one. Um, the just I mean all these different issues can happen, and then. Then you go to the baler. The baler has a lot of moving parts, plus it moves fast because the way it compacts the grass, that's how it works. So that has it, I would argue, it has a better chance of breaking down than anything because it's going so quickly. Then well, you and you're the, talking you're talking a small square baler in that deal yeah, where they've got a, I am. You got a plunger yeah. where the new big round bales are just a series of belts that right. roll it, which is Make, actually yeah. fairly simple, but there's still there's still a lot of moving mechanical parts there. There is, but if anybody knows what a, a like you said, a square, square bale, it, it compacts and makes it really small, and then it kind of poops it out. Um, the the round bale almost makes like a blanket, and it creates a giant circle, and uh, like a small circle, and then it slowly gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it poops it out, like, which is kind of like cool. A, like a snowball rolling down a hill. Or or toilet paper, yeah. uh, really. You know, yeah. it, it's kind of like that. And then, then you get the stacker, you know, whatever thing you use to stack. All right, now you've produced the hay, you've stacked it, you've got it ready. Now you transport. Now you get to where we were talking, <laughs> which now, oh, nope, the transport just went out. My air hose is gone. All right, now, please continue. <laughs> well, then I hope when a guy pulls up there, because you know what? To me, time is money. Time is money, yep. And for those guys, I'm pulling off with our tractor. I'm trying to pull two bales at a time. So I'm trying to pull, you know, 2,400, 2,500 pounds off that trailer with a grapple, pull it off, set it down on the ground, and I'll, I'll set it to the side. And I'm like, hey, I'll get this thing unloaded for you just as quick as I can. Yep. And a lot of times it'll take me 35 to 45 minutes to unload 52 bales, which isn't yeah. bad. It takes a while. But, but yeah. that's the problem and is so, it still takes a while. You know, It's not it like does. it's quick. But here's, here's part of the issue, too, is that every time you stick a grapple in that, in that bale, you've poked a hole in it, and now water can get in there and you can start to rot. Take take your meat or whatever that you've picked up at Walmart and poke it with a with a toothpick. That 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 little cellophane wrapper, poke it just once. Okay, now you moved it. Now you moved it again. Poke it again. Like that's what that's what happens every time as it opens only up there's, the air. Only there's five pokes on each bale when you do yeah. that, or you know, or three or four, but and then what, a lot of times what I've done is I've like, hey, you guys, if you got trying to get in a second load for me, I'll get this thing off. I'll get it just staged just off. I just get it off to the side. Get it off, and then when yeah. they go for another load, then I start I start putting it in a line and stacking it Organizing. in our yard, hoping the hell our tractor doesn't break down. <laughs> yeah. 
right? I mean, because time is money. And if it breaks down, I don't have a spare tractor to unload them. Now well, they're the, screwed. They're the other there. thing too is there was there was one point where I was at the ranch. I was working one summer, and I had to go to a couple weddings for a day. I knew the guy was coming in. I talked to him yeah. and I'm like, hey, I gotta go to a couple weddings. Do you know how to work a tractor? How how do you work this one? He's like, oh yeah yeah, I'm good. I'm like okay, the keys are in it. Go ahead and take care of it. It's, you know, it's it's there. It's waiting for you. Meanwhile, I'm going down the road to the wedding. I'm thinking the entire time, I really hope this guy doesn't break down the tractor because some people aren't necessarily, it's not their equipment. So they have no buy into it to take care of it. So they could dr- jerk those hydraulics around and break the lines because they're just throwing it around like, or really transmission doesn't break or it. Clutch. Yeah, or the tr- yes. <laughs> right? I mean, it's all. It's all. And we it's talked like- about that beforehand. You're like, well, you got to make the weddings, man. Like one of them is your grandmother. So you better be there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. So, yeah. You, You've got all of these, all of these things that can go wrong, and do go wrong. You just hope it doesn't happen in an inconvenient time, right? You know, so uh, and it depends on who's who's doing the truck. And if if some of these guys are pretty good about it, they'll say, you know what, you're pulling that off there. It's just another 15 minutes to, for you to stack that instead of stage it. Don't worry about it. I, I'm okay. And so, all right, cool. I can do that. Because that way I'm not picking these things up twice and poking more holes in them, you know, with this grapple fork. And so uh, one of the guys, I remember last year, I said, are you, are you good? What do you, you know, you want to take another load? And he goes, you know what? You got two loads today. He says, you, I'm charging you $400 a load. That's an $800 day for me. Minus my expenses, he says, I don't need to work any harder than that. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's an older guy. He's like, okay, hey. I'm all right with that. If you want to do a third load, man, I'm I'm up for it. I'll Is just that John? Keep... No, oh, no, man. another guy. John, John was kind of like that, so I would. Yeah, him yeah, but uh, no, a different guy. And I'm like, you know what? I understand, but these guys are my age, and I think, okay, that's kind of an old man attitude. But you know what? Hey, <laughs> if you're okay for it, I'm like, maybe maybe there's a reason why my 25 year old kids are like, oh God, I don't want to work, or my. My lovely wife doesn't want to work with me because I just keep going, you know. It's it's work. Let's get it done. We got to go. We got to let anybody's eardrums. <laughs> time is money. Time is money. Let's go. Oh man. So um. So yeah, you know, and they're like, hey, I've I've had enough. I'm I'm okay for the day. I'm like, you know what? I'm all right with that. I'll I'll go on your schedule. I'm gonna adjust. I'm going to adjust what I'm doing for you. Yeah. So this goes back to relationships. I want those guys, whoever's selling me the hay want them to be happy that they're selling with. me hey yeah yeah and so it's worth their money and it's worth their time it's worth their effort to work right. through go through us than it is anybody else yeah well yeah you, yeah, you want to make it easy and so to make it easy sometimes and like i've told you and and, and Braden, when somebody does work for you the second if you don't pay them on the spot if they're not prepared for that or if they're prepared for that pay them on the spot right now pay them that's money in their pocket they've just earned that do it they will be happy instead of having to chase you down for 90 days Mm -hmm. to collect on that you don't do that to people you know and so if they're if able to to pay it then right now giddy up if not the minute you get that invoice get it in the mail to them yeah get them paid and uh, i'll even go as far as a couple of them where We've agreed on, say, you know, 150 ton of hay or more. And we set a price. Say, okay, it's going to be X amount of dollars, $95 a ton, $85, a ton, whatever it is, you know. And I make that deal with them. And also, I tell you what, you know, this is going to be about half. I'll just write you a check for 10000 So, you know, you've got that down on it. And they're like, sure. Nobody said no yet. Because guess what they're going to do? They're going to operate on our money. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. getting it anyway, but they're operating on They're not having to scratch and go, holy crap, how the hell am I going to buy? How am I going to scrape how through? Am I gonna, yeah, how am I going to get parts? How am I going to do this? So, you know what? I, I try to front that to them. It's building a relationship and to do what the hell you say you're going to do. And uh, hopefully they'll treat you right. And it's like, well, you know what? Hay's up there. Yeah, it's pushing 100 bucks a ton this year. But, you know, you've been buying hay a long time. Well, how's 95 sound? Like, you know what? That sounds fair to me. 
because you know, I'm going to pay for it. And, and I'll I'm, tell you what, being outside the agricultural community with the military, everybody thinks the military is great and hunky dory. I'm going to be very candid with you. It's not. And there are not as many honorable people as you would think. And that, that whole adage of I'm a man of my word and I will, I will take care of you. Like that is, I think that's a lost art. And when people look at agriculture, they see that, Oh, that's, that's still there. And I think that is, that is one of the greatest things about agriculture is I will take care of you because you take care of me. I'll make sure that things are taken care of on both parts you know yeah i i think for the most part but you know what there's some real skunks out there too even in agriculture there will be yeah uh, there always will be unfortunately yeah i mean i remember i remember buying hay from from some people i still buy hay for from them and uh got the hay delivered knew exactly what the tonnage was it was done and then i got an email from somebody else saying i owed them hay money i'm like and I know who they are. I mean, I've known them most of my life, all of my life. And I'm like, I don't owe you any money for hay. What are you talking about? And I mean, it was kind of kind of snotty about getting paid. So there's a skunk there. Yeah. And I'm like, no. And so we got it straightened out where he had actually, the people who were selling the hay to me, contracted his hay ground. And they were going on shares and amounts. And so as soon as he heard I was that I got You and him, man, not me exactly right exactly what i said i said you know what you buy a horse for me you're going to deal with me yeah yeah i'm not i'm not selling anybody else a horse or or expecting payment from anybody else but the person i'm dealing with so you know what you deal with them yeah and then wanted me to write like three different checks for di- three different accounts and like that's laundering type stuff but well whatever. it's not it, i mean he just has different a different way of doing and, and and different businesses that he's he's working but it's like you're a skunk i'm not gonna do this i'm yeah. not gonna take money because if if that's money that's not owed you good luck for them to get it you know i don't know what your arrangement is and it's none of my business i'm yeah. gonna deal with the person i'm dealing with and and i and i've thought of this a, a number of times since you and, and Braden been gone you know you try to be hold your word up and it's like god i've been bad about you guys because you're like hey can we do this oh yeah yeah we'll we'll do that let's go fishing and we never go fishing or we never get something done you know because we're always working but you know when you're dealing outside the family you know you're just like okay this is what i say i'm gonna do i, I gotta do it yeah and you know whether it's whether it's painful or whether it's advantageous or not you made the deal you do it so so anyway um yeah, two hundred dollars a ton is what one guy told me the first time I talked to him today, or this this just a couple of weeks ago. Which those rumors always go; they always go up. You know, ah, hay's going to be up there two hundred dollars a ton. I'm going. I said, you know what? They say that every year. I'm not paying two hundred dollars a ton. I'll have to sell cows first because I can't afford to pay more than what the cattle are worth. That's stupid. You know, I'm not going to do that. So we'll see what happens. And uh, hopefully, hopefully things will level out a little bit. Everybody is so uncertain about fuel prices, uh, whether it's dry. It is so dry here. It's, it's not good. You yeah. know, irrigated guys have got some water on, on their crops. But still, uh, there's a lot of dry land hay that gets put up that that has to fill in when you don't have the dry land hay. Yeah. It's well, tough. We have, we have 15 minutes because we're trying to keep it at 50 for this one. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of roll down the, the notes that we had before we talked about corn being King. And that's part of the reason why prices are getting jacked up. So you want to yeah. talk about corn being King and, and why it is King. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's a whole other aspect of this that is absolutely fills into the overall, uh, profitability or not profitability of, of, a, of, a, of an outfit. Corn is what is mainly fed to feeder cattle to get them to slaughter weight. And so the price of corn is sky high right now and has been for a while. And why is that? Government subsidies, for one. You got you got these greenies, and I'm all about, you know, not using as many fossil fuels as we can. I mean, finding some alternative stuff. But when you start taking corn out of food production and you put that into ethanol use for mm-hmm. fuel um, reduction fossil fuel reduction what happens to your to your uh 
foods food sources they go up in price so well, the cost of corn goes up way high here's something that we also talked about last week and i'll, I'll throw it out there again is alcohol as well right. alcohol is based a lot of it especially i'm in kentucky so i'm in bourbon country and again i'm gonna nerd out again uh if you want to know about alcohol a little bit when it comes to spirits you got american whiskey you got bourbon and then you got rye american whiskey can be whatever the hell it wants as long as it's whiskey um bourbon has to be a a mash bill i'll talk i'll tell you what a mash bill is it's a recipe essentially of percentage you know you got so much percentage of corn wheat barley rye whatever you throw it in there you and you mix it. Yeah. yeah and you mix it all together so i could have you know a, a quarter rye quarter uh corn a quarter wheat and a quarter barley and put it all together ferment it and that's a whiskey now a bourbon the mash bill has to be at least 51% corn. 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 Rye, you have to have at least a 51% rye in that mash bill. Everything else, you can do whatever you want, but it's got to be at least 51% for each of those specific whiskeys. Make a bourbon or a rye. Make it a bourbon yeah. or a rye. And like you're saying with, with uh, food, it's the same with alcohol, especially here. People lose their mind because they'll go to the distillery and I'll tell you what, I, I have a, a, I have a nice bar. I spent a little bit of my deployment money taking care of my bar and re refilling her. And people will, there's some people who are out there that they, they have some substantial money, but they'll also, they're price gougers and they're trying to find the lowest cost, right? I mean, that's a, that's how we are. We're trying to make the most bang for a buck. They'll find a good whiskey and like, Ooh, I'm going to grab a couple of bottles of these cause they're on sale. I'll put them in the bottom of my bar. This is great. Then they'll turn around, they'll come back a couple weeks later and find a different whiskey from the same distillery. Let's say, for example, Buffalo Trace. It's a famous one. You got Blanton's and uh, Buffalo Trace whiskey itself and Eagle Reserve. Those are very high-end whiskeys, even though for, they're decent for the cost. But suddenly you'll come back a week later or may, let's say a month or two later, and suddenly your whiskey's 10 bucks more expensive. Why? Well, the corn went up. Well, why is my why does the corn have anything to do with it? My mash bill is fifty one percent corn. It's gonna come back to my whiskey. It's gonna come right. back to my bar. It's gonna come back to my little daily drinking habit. People lose their mind over the loss of money because the whiskey went up. <laughs> it's it's a well, thing, people. <laughs> well, and and what's the difference between what's what's ethanol? Ethanol is it's alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, it's just alcohol. And you and when you put that in your at your gas pump, and in most of these gas pumps, they'll have the option. Most of them will say ten percent ethanol in our right. country. I don't right. know what it is in other spots, but it'll say that. I think I've seen. And that. so, is there? Yeah, I yeah I haven't traveled that much. I, it's I like didn't super, work. It's I like super get, plus. I don't get to go and play like in the army. Yeah, <laughs> trust me, it's not that great, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in Afghanistan and uh, Kuwait, and anyway, yeah. So. So you've got this this uh, siphoning of corn for political purposes and for government subsidies to make ethanol for fuel instead of ethanol or corn to to produce feedstocks for cattle. Well, corn and, and don't get twisted either. Those who are producing corn for food and those who are producing corn for whiskey are competing against each other as well. Well, yeah, but some of the byproducts are byproducts. I mean, yeah. you know, you can feed or, or you know, you can send those other ways. And there are lots of different varieties of corn. There's no no doubt there. And we, and and, and now I'm getting on the edge of what I don't know because right. I'm not a farmer. Uh, there can be lots of one or the other. However, when you take a piece of ground out of production for one instead of the other, you're still reducing production on your feedstocks. Doesn't yeah. doesn't matter. The other the other. A uh, couple of things that happen there that are watched for our commodities, meaning our cattle and corn, is how much corn is traded globally. Mm. Uh, are we sending corn to China? Are we sending corn to Russia like we do wheat? And the answer is yes. And so we have what uh, they also do is look at what do we have in stock? What do we have in our stores? currently before the season begins and if that stores are if the stores are low in your corn production or corn corn reserves that price goes up price of corn goes up 
it costs more to feed a cow or feed a, a, a butcher steer, butcher heifer, but, butcher animal, a slaughter, slaughter animal, whether it's pork, beef, lamb. I mean, you know, there it doesn't matter. Whatever you're finishing is going to cost more dollars because of where you are on your supply and demand. Uh, you're looking at your stores and you're looking at what's what's being planted and then you're also looking at what are the trades what is the what are the uh uh trade offsets with other countries how much do they have what are they doing drought wise are they flush with uh uh good weather and uh, high production or is it low production we're going to send them a bunch of um corn and i keep saying corn as because corn is king there's other commodities on our grains and our grain markets and and such but Corn is the one is, is the big one. And so you have to watch that as well. And when you got high price of corn to feed, you've got high price of fuel and you've got low cattle markets because if you can't afford to feed the cow, you're not going to feed the producer right. money that they have to have to produce that animal. So it's all about, um, you know, the bottom line. And of course, we we went a long ways on a lot of other different avenues here with our packers. And, uh, you know, the one just got shut down this, this last uh, week or so. Brazilian owned. Did you notice? Largest packer in the U.S. owned by Brazil. Have I there's, not screamed that from the top of my lungs? There's, there's, there's quite a few big corporations yeah. like that, like InBevCore, Absolutely. which is a big brewery company that yeah. owns the Budweiser company now. They're also yep. from Brazil, but whatever. And Anheuser, Anheuser Busch is no longer American. It's not American, yeah. no. But anyway, uh, moving on. Um, we talked about corn is king. Um, something I want to say: prices in supply versus the final cost. That was a that was a comment that I, or a, a, a note that I had. And essentially, if I remember correctly, that was kind of where we're at right now. Where because of the cost of everything else, it's a lot of with the hay, with the feed, with the mineral, stuff like that. A lot of high cost out right now. And then when we go to October, like last October, not a lot of money coming back. And so in my monologue that I sent out today, it's like we're we're getting ten dollars right now, but we're we're having to put out a hundred every year. And so where's that ninety come in? It, out of our pocket. So you know, where, where is that? And what's that going to do to us in the future? And especially this upcoming year, because you're, you're already talking about, you know, drawbacks. What are we going to have to do with drawbacks if we have to, you know? Well, and I'm going to, I'm going to call some of our older cows like we normally do, but I may have right. to call quite deeply. Right. Like, you know, like I the mean, next generation after that, that could go a couple, two, three years, maybe four. Right. right. Yeah. You take some of your cows, you know, there's a couple of cows and I was looking at them today. We moved a small bunch uh, to another pasture with a couple of bulls. Bulls are in, making babies. Come on, come on, let's make babies. Don't but, break yourself in the meantime, boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no, last be year. gentle. Be gentle. <laughs> but we're uh, we're looking at some of these cows, and I'm like, man, she looks a little bit thin, and always has. Uh, last year, this one cow, what number one hundred three, had a set of twins as a heifer, and she raised really a really good heifer twin set for, and it looked good drew her down she looked a little tough i'm like man i just oh okay we'll let her go let's let's build her back up in the fall in the winter time we'll feed her up see how she does and she's just kind of looking a little thin number 104 one right behind her that we tagged same way and I'm like okay, and, and the problem with tough. that i would say is you know we're you're looking at potentially going a couple more generations than you normally would and the the back side of that is well what did you pick wrong what if what if one of those cows could have gone an extra year or two, whereas the right. one that you left could have, you know, they could have gone right away. Well, but what you got to look at is is what's the offspring? What does that production look mm -hmm. like? And those calves out of those two cows are freaking bruisers. Yeah, they're like big. you know they're what? Good. Yeah, they're good. They're yes, they're drawing her down, but I am not going to sacrifice her because she's she's producing a fantastic calf. If I can bring her back every year. She may not make the 12 years, recover. 11, 12 yeah. years. Yeah. She may not do that. She may make nine or 10, like a normal herd cow. But if we're, we're getting a lot of these cows, you know, the, the, the herd stability is being able to produce five calves in a row for your herd. We are blowing that out of the water. Yeah. We always have. We are doing great that way. Yeah. 
so I'm I'm not upset about that. And we're gonna we're gonna take some losses like that. Big deal, or or not as I shouldn't say a loss. We, we're gonna take as big a gains by keeping an animal in our herd because every year we keep her in and she and she uh, produces a calf. Her cost to us induced because it yeah. takes us five years right to produce a cow where she's now paying for herself because the first three years on the on this planet where she's touching the ground she's not done anything for us we've had to support her and then it takes a couple of calves to then pay that back so there's five years old and then we then we're able to get another sometimes seven years you know we got one cow right now she's 14 years old that's that's i got to be a record for us so yeah. um but it's but still you still look at your herd and you go you know what that cow looks good, but boy, her calf isn't quite as good as the rest of them. That's the cow that's got to go. You can't be deceived by just how that cow looks. You've got to look at the cow and the calf. And your mother takes really good records on what's that that's, calf look like. That's the important the part. Two Knowing, years ago. Because you know, if like, you have questions yeah. going back and looking through and reading yes. and going, you know what? I thought she was doing well, but looking at these notes compared to everybody else, she's the data says she's not. And you have yep. to be very objective. You can't be... Well, it's ears, like you, like, but we love ears. No, 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 no. Ears has been doing great, but she didn't produce like she should have. She's gotta go. You know, like obviously yeah, we had that happening. conversation. Guess what happened? So ears I, is gonna I, stay. But that, yeah, that's that's yes. the example. You know, but uh, your mom pointed something out to me that I completely freaking missed. Number forty-eight calf last year had a calf, didn't get the cl- uh, sack cleaned off its face, found it dead. You know, I'm mm-hmm. like, damn it lost a calf yeah and i went okay the year before she lost a calf it was alive but it was broke to hell i think she'd stepped on it defending it against probably a coyote not completely her fault but she didn't care for that calf and i'm like and that but your mom taking notes on that writing that down and then like oh now that's what you that's where you look to see where you're sacrificing is right well and i know some people through the twitter sphere uh the cow doesn't produce one year gone, gone. we give them doesn't... we give them one well well we have normally and... normally it's like hey here's a pass let's see what happens if they go a second we're like done you're out depends on the cow it depends on what she's produced in the past yeah mm-hmm. uh how old she is if she's if she's nine ten years old she's gonna go because right. as they get older it makes sense the conception rate goes down. She may not, you know, she, she may be hit or miss, but we can, we can replace her with younger, younger animals. If a heifer misses and now that we're, you know, our herd is built and I'm not giving, I'm being a little bit more picky and more choosy. If a heifer is dry, goodbye. Yep. She may have fertility issues. Yep. And you know, my thought, we've talked about that. Um, you know, you got somebody who's a fence crawler and a fence jumper. And I've noticed that a lot of times they don't really conceive there's something going on hormonally i think maybe there's something with that aggression that they got some extra testosterone in their system who knows who knows but anyway so not paying 200 bucks a a ton some of these cows may have to go and that hurts because it takes a long time to build a herd up a long time well i mean it 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 adds to a comment that i mean to keep it short that we had last week which is to be in this business you're all in or you're all out because as soon as you start drawing back it's very very hard to recover so because well, of the and, nature of the job, because of the high prices, the more animals you have, the more you can make up for it when it comes to market time, because you're selling in, in larger quantities, volume, and you're, able, yes. you're kind of, those volumes kind of sell, save you in right. a sense because of the wholesale value. But when you're right. only selling 10 at a time or something like that, it's really hard to stay in the business and you're just, you're just in it for the hobby at that point. We're, right. Well, and a good thing about having only, if you're only running 10 cows or 20 cows, um, you don't have a lot into them either. It's true. So that helps, you know, you're not, you're not buying 300 ton of hay like we are a year, 600,000 pounds of hay that makes just poop. You yeah. know, I mean, it keeps them, you know, they're, they're, they're got some work building some calves that are you know, inside them through the winter. It isn't just that, but it sure seems like it, it <laughs> like we're just making cow shit, you know, we're paying for it. So. <laughs> uh, anyway, things happen. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's good for this episode. We'll, we'll knock this one out and then we'll get to the second one. So with that, and I'll turn you, it over to you. 
Yeah, you you that have been with us before, we uh, appreciate you sticking around, listening to us rant. Hope you learned something. And we thank you till you're better paid.